Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurs in Fuego. We're documenting the journey of incredible entrepreneurs, one digital footprint at a time, my new best friend. You, you, like, you, you became my new best friend like about three weeks ago or something like that. Come on. Nikki Bagley, how are you? I'm very well, thank Arizona you. Arizona Minority Business Alliance. Yes, sir. But you got other businesses too. And it's all stemmed around there. I, all the other businesses fuel the business incubator. The, the business incubator. Mm -hmm. And is it fair to say that this is probably, because I don't know of any other one, that this is the only African-American incubator here in Phoenix? Oh, yes, absolutely. There isn't any other. Oh, no, no. Right? No. And that's why it is. Because there's a, you know, there was a specific need. You know, it's not just building businesses, but we have to, um, in a lot of cases, we're actually building up, um, building up individuals to believe that they can do it. You know, so it's not just, hey, you want to start a business? All right, sure. You know, we have to work on some uh, generational curses, so to speak. Explain what those re generational curses are. Spirits of poverty, spirits of depression, you know, a spirit of failure, all those things that puts a stop on many people's dreams. Even inferiority? I mean, are we feeling sure. less than? Absolutely. And not deserving of starting our own business that is holding us back? Absolutely. Is that, is that what you're discussing? Absolutely. There's, there are so many who have, um, you know, be, uh, because of the systemic racism that has been flowing through this country for so many, many years, yeah. um, you have a lot of people who, who still don't believe in their own abilities. You know, so um, it may be a, a single mother who's never been on the top of anything. You know, she's always struggled to do this, that, and the other. You know, so she's coming with <clears throat> issues of failure, you know, or feel, um, feelings of inferiority. Yeah. You know, she has never known success, so she has no idea how to walk into success. And truthfully, a lot of people are just scared of success. So they need a cheerleader. And man, I don't know why the Dallas Cowboys haven't called me yet. <laughs> because I'm one of the best cheerleaders out there. You were talking to a New York fan, so <laughs> be, be, be careful. Be careful. Uh, but, all right. So, so you have this community yes, who... Sir. And again, it's, it's some, when we generalize, it's, it's sometimes very dangerous. But for the, for the most part, mm -hmm. it's a community that is afraid of success. Right. When you come in here, then, you're more than an incubator. You're a coach. You are somebody that is saying whatever the prejudices there may exist in your head in the past, Forget about that. Right. Let's talk business. Right. Let's and talk you know, business. But I actually, I actually acknowledge those past hurts. Sure, sure. You, you know, have to and there, there's some real validity in a lot of those fears. I mean, historically, when um, African Americans were on the rise in uh, creating towns, creating, uh, uh, you know, uh, city centers, you know, unfortunately, white people have come through and burned it to the ground, almost in every case. I mean, literally just burned it to the ground. So now we're in a in a, you have a lot of people who has the thought process, well, white people won't let us win anyway. You know, so these are the kind of things that I have to come through and clean up, you know, so that you can get back on track. You know, I am a firm believer, George Frazier has said once, that our race was born for success. You know, and we see so many instances throughout history, you know, of those who had the courage to step out there and do something different. Sure. Regardless of what it looks like, or regardless of what history has shown us, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be awesome at it. So we have to acknowledge those things, talk through those things, and show them how to get back firmly on the path to success because it's there. And um, I believe that God has already made successful all of our endeavors. So it's just a point of having someone, come on, baby, <laughs> you can do it. And the difference between you is that you're not just preaching about it, you are actually opening up your pocket and making things happen. <laughs> Absolutely. And that is a huge difference because <laughs> you, know, you can talk all you want about what you're talking about and I hear you and I respect that 
But you're... <laughs> Yeah. Let's go do it. Well, you know, and I think, um, you know, because uh, a lot of African Americans, minorities in general, tend to be very distrustful. Even when it looks awesome, they don't see a downside for themselves. Something must be wrong. <laughs> you know, so I come in putting my money where my mouth is. Yep, you sure do. You know, n I'm not here for me. I'm here for you. You know, no, don't go to Quickie Check Cash Mart, those uh, title loan places. You know, come on over. I'll make you a $500 loan. You know, come, we'll do, I'll do up to a $1,500 loan <clears throat> out of my pocket to try to turn the, uh, our economic situation, not just our, um, our business ecosystem, but our our financial ecosystem as well. Turn these things around, and that's what's going to set the stage for our children, you know, being born into success. And, and that, is, that is incredibly, incredibly good. So the way that you evaluate these businesses is not the traditional way. I mean, you don't, you don't sit down and you go and open up all these spreadsheets and look at financial projections and everything else, which I'm sure you do uh, yeah. to, to, uh, because you're a businesswoman. But at the same time, you look beyond that. I do. I do. And I, I look at your village. I look at your tribe, mm. you know, because a lot of times it's the tribe that propels you much further than what you would have gone on your own. Excellent. And people who are smart enough to surround themselves with a smart tribe are people I want to be in business with. You're too much. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is, this is great. I mean, it, here, here's what, what I love about you is that all these things we hear all the time, right? Mm. We hear people predicate about, oh yeah, this is this is the, the, the business model and this is what we do, incubations, think but 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 you put your pocket where your mouth is. Absolutely. And that I think is an incredible difference and that's why I respect you so much. <laughs> oh thank you so much. You, you're doing it, man. You're doing it. <laughs> thank you. You've got a matchmaking service as well. I do. What's that all about? Well, um, I, I think that a lot of the reasons we are in the economic situations we are right now yeah. is because the black family has been gut punched, you know, by mass incarceration, by uh, even the um, <clears throat> social welfare uh, programs that they uh, use to help single mothers, but it denied access to the men in those mothers' lives. Oh no, if you're not married, <laughs> he can't be anywhere near where you are. You, people <laughs> got to go to your matchmaking site. What is, what is the site? It is NB Matchmaking. Uh, I'm sorry, nbmatch.com. I want to help you. NB Matchmaking Agency is it's the name. nbmatch.com. nbmatch.com. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I got to help you with it. Right. I got to right. help you with your own. There's book. a photography studio. There is a mobile car care. There's, geez, oh, criminy. We're building a store and a commercial kitchen, actually, think, right now. You're, you're amazing. And the one that cut my out, yeah, of course. It's got to be the matchmaking. Of course. You go figure. Here's something. I know. <laughs> with that, we're out.